Good evening, I'm Alison Cretney. Scrolling through your newsfeed or scanning energy-related headlines in this country, it's quite likely you're left with the impression that you need to choose a side or pick a camp. Are you for climate action or are you for a thriving economy? Do you stand up for jobs or do you stand up for the environment? It can also leave the impression that the sides of these binary choices are wholly irreconcilable. And at times, it may even feel like we're at war with one another. Clearly, the future of energy is highly polarized, and dare I say, increasingly so. As young people around the world rise up and call for stronger action in this climate emergency, all of us are called to do our part and to work together. Yet that's very hard to do when things are so polarized. To move beyond this polarization, we must find ways to be productive together on energy issues throughout this country. And we can do this. Amidst the increased finger pointing, blame, and heated rhetoric, I feel hopeful. We can work together to consciously create our energy future. And my hope stems from what you might consider to be an unlikely place, Alberta. <laughs> unlikely place on this topic, at least. I've, I've worked in and around energy for the last 18 years, beginning my career as a young engineer in the oil and gas industry, and then from there moving quite quickly into sustainability consulting focused on climate action. And now as managing director of the Energy Futures Lab, I help very diverse innovators find common ground and advance solutions to help create the energy system the future needs. So in the lab, many different people from diverse backgrounds come together to really hear what underlies perspectives that they don't agree with, to seek common ground rather than division, and to launch experiments and pilots together towards a, share vi a shared vision of an energy future, one in which we are um, thriving with a low carbon economy and addressing the urgency of climate change. And this work is demonstrating that in fact there is a large productive middle space inhabited by those focused on solutions and on creating what's needed for the future, a place that we've come to refer to as the radical middle. And in the radical middle, there's a recognition that our traditional strengths can be the basis for new opportunities and that approaching change in this way can be unifying rather than divisive. For example, how about deploying Alberta's drilling expertise to develop geothermal energy? Unlocking the challenge of geothermal from oil and gas wells can turn liabilities into assets. Or another exciting example is lithium. Did you know that there are vast amounts of lithium that could be extracted from oil and gas wastewater? As lithium demand is growing globally due to batteries and electric vehicles and Canada could be a source. By utilizing Alberta's strengths in oil and gas and its skilled workforce, we'll soon be producing lithium from what has been considered a waste. And bringing new solutions to life often requires working with unfamiliar collaborators, like in the case of tech entrepreneur Pragit Nibber of Rewat Power, who's working alongside farmers and small business owners, energy companies, utilities, government agencies, to pilot a digital technology that aggregates generation from rural solar and wind sites to giving them access to emission credits. So this digital solution is important for creating a more adaptable and interconnected electricity system. So one that can be responsive to, to more distributed energy resources and growing electrification. Yet, the elephant in the room for energy futures conversations in Canada is always the role of oil and gas. In many ways, this is at the crux of the polarization. And depending on who you talk to, there's wildly different views of the industry. From it's dirty and unsustainable and has no place in a low emission future, to oil is our economic lifeblood. The world needs it, and we produce the cleanest, most ethical oil in the world. So these views may seem irreconcilable. But I would argue that finding ways to reconcile them is critical for Canada. 
And I'm happy to report that far from the headlines, I'm seeing the seeds of some productive middle ground here as well. You know, perhaps the fundamental issue with oil and gas isn't it in themselves, but the ways that we're currently using them, producing and using, especially the emissions from burning them. So what if we use bitumen from the oil sands and materials rather than burning it in vehicle engines? That's the simple question posed by a group of innovators in Alberta. Suddenly, the carbon intensity of bitumen shifts from being a liability to being an asset. Bitumen could potentially be used in carbon fiber, fortified steel, asphalt, even as a source of vanadium for renewable energy storage batteries. And this is not small potatoes. Corporate Knights has estimated that oil sands could generate over $200 billion by 2030, making carbon fibers from bitumen. Another example is hydrogen. Have you heard about the group of freight and energy companies in Alberta who've created a $15 million demonstration project to design and manufacture two hydrogen fuel cell electric transport trucks? These trucks will be fueled by hydrogen made from natural gas. And this is only the beginning. You know, the big opportunity is building a hydrogen economy where oil and gas resources are converted into hydrogen fuel, exporting that while putting the carbon back into the ground, virtually emission free. Research conducted by Dr. David Lazell and his team at the University of Alberta, or University of Calgary, sorry, shows that producing and exporting hydrogen would generate from three to 10 times more economic activity than the equivalent amount of oil and gas. These are all things underway right now. And there's much to learn from these efforts. And it matters for our country because we need a new approach to how we talk about and how we work on energy. So in closing, I'll leave you with this challenge. Look beyond the headlines. Look at the people, not the institutions. And you'll find many people from all walks of life who are tapping out of the divisive either or us versus them dichotomies, who are engaging productively with those with different viewpoints and who are working passionately to advance solutions together in the radical middle. Thank you. Thank you.